network topologies. Uh, so topologies is a refer to on how the devices are connected to each other, uh, or they are laid laid down physically or logically. Uh, so topology can be like you can think about it as a roads in the layout of a city or a seating arrangement in a classroom. Okay. So these topologies effect impact uh, how efficiently and reliable the network works. Uh, traditionally, we had something called a bus topology. So where uh, the devices were connected to a central cable and data is transmitted in one direction and travels along the cable until it reaches the target device. So it can start from left to right or right to left, and uh, it will just travel, travel, travel. And finally, it will reach the target device. It was cheap. It works well in the smaller networks. But once the traffic increases, uh, it had its uh, limitations of performance. and any problem in this central cable will mean that the entire network goes down and it was not scalable beyond few devices so that was it was not popular today we have this kind of a network which is uh, there in your cable tv network so there you have these kind of bus topologies still then there was a ring topology okay uh, so here there was a ring form in the main bus Okay, the case is that even uh, the limitations were still the same. If one device or link fails, the whole network will fail. It was still slower uh, because the data was passing through multiple devices. So, uh, so again, this was not very popular, and this uh, soon was not continued. Then came the start topology. So here, the devices were connected to a central hub. And uh, so here, uh, there is no circular loop. Uh, a device can talk to the other device directly through this particular central hub. So these are highly reliable. Even if one device fails, other will fine. Even if one link failed, the other continued to work. It is easy to remove and add devices. It offers centralized management. All those things are there. But yes, still, if the central hub fails, uh, the network will fail. And it requires more cabling. Okay. Then we have something called a mesh topology. It is very reliable. Here, devices are connected to each other. Uh, there are multiple points of failure. So, I think uh, so. Even if one connection fails, other can still continue. The only problem is that it is expensive and uh, due to a lot of cabling, and this is complex to install and manage. A very common example of a mesh topology today is your internet. So there you will have devices which have multiple paths among them. They are connected to each other in multiple ways, uh, providing you the resilience that is required. Okay, So uh, not like if one router will fail, your entire net will be put on, nothing like that. Then we have got these topologies, which are very common in our uh, offices, which are practical. So one of them is called tree topology. So where we have got branching. So if you will see that there is a core switch or a core core uh, core network onto which your sub switches are connected, and then these are connected to your multiple systems. And even if on one leg there are more than thousands of PCs, you can simply keep on extending extending it like a branch of a tree, right? Only catch is if the main trunk fails, then everything fails. This is a complex wiring and setup. But then uh, this is the most flexible way of networking in a large office. Okay. Then we have hybrid topologies. These topologies are mostly whenever we have offices in multiple locations. Normally, these are combination of a star and mesh topology or a star or a ring uh, star uh, or a ring topology. Right. Uh, these are highly flexible, can be designed as per the business needs, scalable and efficient. Uh, the only limitations can be complexity and cost. But then if we have offices on multiple locations, this is something that you need. 